So welcome back. As you can see, I've spent a lot more time now styling the hair. I've also reworked the eyelashes just so that the left side is works a lot better. Now, as I said before, the right side of the head, looking from where the point I'm rendering from, you don't see the right side of the head, so or the back here. So I've not spent any time trying to clean that up. You know, even up here it looks a little bit messy, but the main thing is that it looks okay from the render point of view here. So let's open up the render view and let's just check the render options. Let's increase that to four for now, just so we get a little bit of a crisper view. So let's see how she's looking. And at the moment, this is the basic shader that is applied when you create uh, your description. So as you can see, adding in the eyelashes has helped to give the eyes a bit more depth. It's just helped to finish that area off. I've also decided to just keep the uh, eyebrow textures that I added on there because they work quite nicely um, and I wasn't completely happy with how the X-Gen eyebrow, uh, eyebrows were looking compared to this. You know, it's a bit of a cheat, but it, you know, it, for me it worked better. So it may be for you that the X-Gen eyebrows work better You can and maybe you can afford a bit more time to work on them. But for me, I quite like these so so there we have the hairstyle it could maybe do with a little bit more tweaking but we're at a point now where we need to see how it's rendering and then we can go in and make any final changes or tweaks so let's just move that over here so as I said we've got the basic shader on there now and it just doesn't look right it's too glossy the hair there's just lots about it that doesn't look right. And if we compare it back with our concept image, the hair, the color's not right either. But what I'm gonna do is instead, I'm gonna replace the shader. So let's just go to Hypershade. What I'm gonna do this time is, actually I'll stop that so it doesn't keep updating. Now before we used a AI standard surface shader, this time I'm gonna use an AI standard hair. So we've got that there. Let's just get rid of that and that. So we've got our standard shader here. Let's just change that to AI hair, like so. And I've also put all the uh, the hair in a nice group here. Now I'm not going to do the eyelashes, so I'm just going to apply that directly to those descriptions. And we can see in the viewport that changed. Just open that up in the attribute editor. Let's see how that looks with the default values. So we can already see the highlights are a lot more subtle. And we could just isolate the hair just so we're only looking at that. But I want to get an overall view of how the face is balancing out once the hair's in. But what we could do is we could also just render a region. So let's maybe just render this region here. Now at the moment, the hair is black. As we can see that there, those highlights are quite nice. They're a lot more subtle. We've got a nicer sheen than if we use the, uh, the shader that was applied by default. Now, just like the skin, the hair shader has some presets. Uh, now it's probably going off the side of the video, but it's the same as with the others, we can just use replace. You know, we could change it to Auburn. 
Let's see that update. And that looks quite nice. You know, there's lots of other options. Black could even try blonde. You know, you get the idea there. We've got some nice presets, just like we had with the skin, that we can start, um, you know, they give the, you the foundations to start building upon. So for ours, let's try dark brown as our starting point. Now that's a nice place for us to start, but she is looking, well, the hair is looking a bit too dark. So let's try reducing the melanin to 0.3 maybe. Now that's brightened it up, but again, it's the wrong color. Let's try reducing the redness as well. So again, it's still the wrong sort of color, but what we can do, I mean, it's too bright, so let's change the base color. Let's drop this down to make that darker. And let's adjust the roughness just to get a bit more of a sheen. You know, just so the highlights aren't as tight. And all I'm gonna do for now is I'm just gonna play around with these values. So again, it's a little bit too... And that's a bit too far the other way. Reduce that base colour right down because we need the hair to be darker. So that's looking a little bit better. Let's maybe reduce that to two, get rid of a bit more of the brownness. Well, that's brightened it up a bit. Let's increase that to four. Okay, so that's a bit darker. But you get the general idea. See, that's looking a lot nicer already. So we can just continue to tweak these few values here just to get the exact look that we want. So that's the hair. Now we also want to, this is currently rendering and towards the end of the hair, we're not getting any sort of fading. There's no opacity in there. Now it's probably not gonna have a good opportunity to show it because this is quite dark. So what we'll maybe do is we will, let's jump onto the eyelashes. And we can start to uh, work on those. So let's just stop that for now. Uh, rendering editors, hypershade. So I'm going to create another standard hair material. Call that lashes, and then we'll select the eyelashes um, description and assign that. And we'll just use black.
for now. So there we've got some nice thick black eyelashes, but we want them to taper off slightly. In fact, let's just increase that to six, just so we can get a nicer render. And just close that window a lot slightly. Just like that update. Actually, the test resolution, I'm just going to switch that to 100%. Again, just so we can see the eyelashes a bit clearer. It's going to take a little bit longer to render. There we go. So we can see that they're quite thick eyelashes and they are, you know, even though we've tapered them, we also want them to fade out a little bit. So in the shader here, I'm going to go down to the emissions tab and I'm going to click on next to opacity, click here. And I'm going to go down to Arnold utilities. And what we are looking for is the ramp. There we go, AI ramp RGB. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change, use implicit UVs to curves only. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna use this ramp as the opacity. So let's maybe just select a smaller section. And just see how just applying that has affected things. So we can see here it's got a little bit softer towards the end. Maybe what we want it to do instead is we want it to fade, start fading from halfway up rather than from the beginning. So we can adjust the ramp here and we'll maybe make it smooth instead. Wait for that to update, see how that's looking. So that's looking better, although it's still a little soft. Although actually, let's just try swapping those around. Drop that down a little bit just to make them a little bit softer. So that looks better. We've got much softer eyelashes, you know, and they fade out towards the ends. Let's just increase that. Wait for it to update. Yeah, they look better. A lot more natural, a lot more, a lot softer. So they look good. So we've got the hair set up. Again, we just need to play around with the. Uh, the values to get the right color. Um, we could add in one of these ramps as well to the hair, just so that he, at the end of each hair that, that fades out too. Um, we'll just stop that. So one, there are two more areas that we want to add to this portrait, just to add a little bit more realism. And we can do the same process for, for both. So with the, when it comes to the skin, if you look at your own face, you'll see you have really small, fine hairs. 
Um, this is sometimes referred to as peach fuzz. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add that on to her head. And what this is going to do is it's going to help when it comes to the render. It's going to help break up the surface of the skin. It's going to add a slightly more... Well, it's just going to add a little bit more realism to it. And particularly around the silhouette around the sides here. Depending on your lighting, it's quite nice if you get the lighting to catch these small hairs as well. And all we need to do with this, I'm just going to isolate this. We're just going to use exactly the same tools that we've been using before. So what I'm going to do is I don't want any on the lips and I don't want any of these hairs on the inside of the nostrils or around the eyes. Just increase that selection. Although we've selected too much around the nose. Now you could go a step further and make sure that you're not selecting or select an area on the scalp because obviously that's under the hair. But for now this will do just for the demonstration. So we've selected the lips and around the eyes and I'm just going to hold down shift and invert that selection. I'm then just going to go to generate, create interactive groom splines again. Uh, and we'll just call this peach fuzz. Now I'm going to drop the CV count to four because these are going to be quite short hairs. And we'll try the length at one and we'll just see what we get. Click apply. Close that. So they're quite long actually, so let's undo that. Delete that peach fuzz and try that again. So maybe half the length. There we go, that's a bit better. Let's go back to our uh, interactive groom workspace. So I'm going to make these a lot thinner. Not five. And we want them to taper as well. Now these are going to be quite subtle. So they, they're about right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a noise modifier. That's just going to add a bit of variety to each hair, as you can see. And we can adjust these to get a bit more variety in there if we need to. I'll maybe just set that to two. And then we can use the sculpt tools to style the flow of the hair again. Okay, I'm not sure why that's not updating, but you know, you can just use the same tools that we did with the hair. Use a comb brush just to adjust the flow of the hair. Use a length tool to make the uh, upper lip peach fuzz a little bit uh, longer. Uh, but that is it, that is all we do to add that peach fuzz. And we do the same when it comes to the top of her uh, dress here. We can use peach fuzz, uh, we can use the same process as we have with the peach fuzz to get that fur effect, get that fluffy jumper effect. So I'm just going to apply that. I'm going to try and figure out what's going on with uh, with this. I maybe need to reapply it or restart the scene because of when I undid it earlier, that may have caused a little bit of an error. Um, but yeah, for now, I'm just going to leave that. I'll go over this and I will uh, update them 
and then uh, I will see you in a moment. So I've played around with this scene a lot more now. I've adjusted the hair and the eyelashes. I managed to get the uh, the peach fuzz effect working. Um, it just needed a restart and then I needed to reapply it. Um, but you can just make it out here. I've also assigned a shader to that. Now the shader for the peach fuzz was just white. Um, and when it came to creating the ramp for the opacity, I just made it a bit more transparent because obviously we don't want this this sort of fine hair to be really thick um, and cast a lot of shadows. We just want it to be fine uh, and just a hint of it. If I zoom in, now this is just a low resolution render but you can just make out you know, where the light is catching this hair around here. So it just gives a really nice effect. I've also done the same down on the jumper down here or a dress or whatever it is but it needed to be furry and fluffy so I've just done exactly the same as what we did with the peach fuzz just added a description which just applied to the whole model and then added a bit of noise to it and then just added another hair shader uh, to that as well now while this is rendering I can already see there are areas that I need to adjust but the beauty of this setup is I can go in and I can change the proportions of the face. I can adjust the neck. I can tweak the shaders because looking at this and comparing it to the, the main concept, there are elements like the eyes, the shape of the eyes need changing slightly. Maybe, um, I want the skin, uh, to have a bit more warmth and some more specularity in there it needs to be a bit shinier now obviously the concept is uh it's just a concept and it is maybe too shiny so i'm not going to copy that directly just as just like with the rest of this i haven't gone in and copied it one for one i wanted this render to be an interpretation of the concept I'm also noticing things like the neck here bulges out a little bit, so I just need to go in and tweak the model to adjust that. But because we're at the stage we are now, we've got all the elements in place. We can now just go in and tweak and polish and adjust and just do more renders and test renders until we get the, the right shape, uh, you know, the right specularity, the right skin tone everything just exactly the way we want it. And that probably brings us to the end of this tutorial. Now, this has just been a basic overview of the whole process. I've not gone into any major details in any specific areas, just because of time restrictions, really. And just because with this tutorial, I wanted to give you all the basics and then you can take those and you can build upon them so that you can create your own portraits you know and then you can once you've got those skills you know you can develop them further and work on them further i hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and you've learned something from it if you want to learn more feel free to follow my own youtube channel which is youtube.com and cgi I've got lots and lots of tutorials up there with lots more planned in the future. Or just get in touch if you've got any questions about any of the uh, content in these videos. So again, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching uh, and I will see you on the next one.